ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mic Drop Podcast. It's your boy Alex Wardu. Follow us on all social media. Links will be down in the description down below. Got a special guest in the building. What do you want me to call you, Mike or like? Yeah, Mike Wick. Whatever sounds better to you, man. Mike Wick, because I see your name's like Mike Gama, so I, I didn't know if to call you like Mike Gama or like yeah. Mike Wick. Or it's like an alter. That's my real name. Nah, that's the, that's my real name, but Wick <laughs> is like my alter. That's what I used to like produce. Because I noticed that okay. all the big producers had this like super cool name, like Turbo Metro Booming, and their real name was some shit like Quantavius Dingle, like some weird ass name. And they had like, a cool <laughs> like nickname. So I was like, Wick yeah. sounds pretty cool, and there's no other producer called Wick, so I'm just gonna call myself Wick. That's a dope name. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. Thank some you. Nardo Thank Wick you. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that shit got me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, they're gonna think I stole like Nardo Wix shit, but yeah. We- oh. Yeah. All right. Um make sure you like and subscribe, all that shit. Um the videos and the clips from the interviews that we do will be on the social media links down below. Shit, talk about where you're from, how you got into music, how you got into producing. Katana, all that shit, just go crazy. Oh yeah. Um, so I started producing when I was like around, I think 18, 19 years old. I did a bunch of different shit. Like I started pro wrestling. I was just looking for something, you know, to do. Cause I really didn't know what to do with my life. So I was like, fuck it, let me try producing. Can I cuss here? Are we like live or is it just gonna be like on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, you can. I'm a you very- I use a lot of profanity, man. Like, I'm sorry, to be honest. I'm the same way, bro. Yeah. Trust um, me, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> when, I was, when I was around, like, four years old, um, my family was, like, into church, like, heavy. And I remember mm-hmm. me going to church every Sunday, and there was this, like, little five-year-old kid that was a drummer. And my dad was, like, obsessed with his drumming. My dad was like, you need to be like him. Like, you need to, like, get an instrument. I need you to be in this church, like, choir thing. And I'm not sure what it was. But there was like a little kid playing guitar, another like five-year-old playing drums. It was like a little sweatshop of like Christian music. And my dad was like, you're going to be the next Christian drummer, bro. And my dad bought me like a (laughs) drum set. And I started learning drums when I was like four or five years old. But I really didn't like music that much at that age. So what drums have like to tune, they have like this little fucking circle thing, right? And I used to hate drumming. And what I did was like, I used to grab my crayons and like stuck it in the fucking drum set, like in the kick. I used to like try to destroy the drums, <laughs> which was like the worst thing I could have done. But I ended up destroying like the drum set. And, but the thing that came with the drum was like a, an offer. Like if you buy the drums, you get a free guitar. And I really liked the guitar. It was like, that, I, I hated the drums, but I loved playing guitar. And I started playing guitar since I was like five. And then when I was like eight, I got into like music clubs because I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. That's another fun fact. And I moved down to Veracruz, Mexico, which is where I live right now when I was around 11. So I've been living here in Mexico since I was 11, but I grew up in Nashville. And yeah, I was I was always like really good at school, but I really hated the idea of being like in an office or working, having a boss because I just always wanted to do my own thing, but I didn't know what I what I wanted to do. So I was when I was like 16 and I was like, what do I want to do? I have no clue. So I just started thinking about all the shit I wanted to do when I was little. Like I wanted to be a pro wrestler. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a veterinarian. I, I tried every single one of those things. Like, cause I was like, if I wanted to do that when I was a little kid and I had like a big imagination, I was like, I was like, maybe there's something there. So I tried being a vet. I tried being a pro wrestler. And then I remembered I really wanted to be a guitarist. So I got into like heavy metal bands, rock bands in my fucking high school. And I started like uploading covers on YouTube about like a Slipknot, Metallica, shit like that. Okay. And I really loved hip hop too. Like I wasn't just like a metal head. You know how metal heads are always like hip hop isn't music and shit. But I yeah. really enjoyed <laughs> hip hop and like every single genre. So I remember my like principal always saying, please do not play a fucking heavy metal song in this event. Cause they were always like, yo, you want to play in a, 
in this event, like the I'm like this super important person here in Mexico is gonna come and I want you to play like a little song. And I was like, bet. And I was like an evil, not evil, but I really love <laughs> fucking heavy metal. And they were like, please don't play heavy metal. And I was like, bet. And then I got on stage and I was like, rah, 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 like playing some fucking heavy metal stuff. And my <laughs> teachers hated me. They they really didn't want me to play in any more events. And I got really angry and I was like, damn, so what do I do now if they don't like heavy metal? I'm just gonna be a rapper. So I didn't know how to start because I knew I've been writing since I was little. Since I was around like eight years old, I used to do like the cringiest stuff. I, I recorded myself on webcam. I was like eight years old and I was recording like myself m making music and like rapping and stuff. I started like a little rap group with another Mexican friend of mine. And bro, like I'm so glad that it's off of the internet because it was like the cringiest shit. Like I made music, but I used like the Alvin and the Chipmunks like voice changer. So, like, all the songs I fucking did were, like, using the Alvin and the Chipmunk voices. Like, it was so bad, bro. But I remember how I used to write music. So, I was like, I'm going to become a rapper. And... <laughs> Yo, your shit cutting out crazy. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's good so, now. Yeah. It's good now. It's good now. All right, bet. So, I started looking in, on YouTube for, like, beats and stuff because I was like, I'm going to become a rapper. That was, like, my new life goal. So I found this um, producer called 18. He's one of my my OG homies, bro. Like, we've been through so much. But I remember I was like, bro, I live in Mexico. I have no money. Please let me use this beat for free. And he was like, nah, sorry, I can't do that. I can't give you free beats. And I was like, you can't give me free beats? All right, bet. So I started to learn how to produce. And I started making songs and producing my own beats. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to start selling them because I really have no money maybe there's something there right so i did that i uploaded a beat on youtube and like within two days or three days it got sold like i uploaded a beat stars as well i made like 20 bucks i remember i was in like college like first semester i ran downstairs and i showed my mom i was like mom look i just made 20 dollars off a beat i made i started crying because it was like the most amazing thing in my life yeah. And I got obsessed, bro, with making beats and uploading them. Not for the money, but it was, like, crazy. Like, I started getting stubs. People started listening to my beats. It was like, damn, I have a small platform. Like, I had 100 subscribers, but those 100 subscribers, like, meant the whole world to me. Like, every day I was uploading, posting, trying to reach out to them. Like, hey, have you listened to this and stuff like that? And, yeah, bro, like. A couple months passed by. I had like 300 subs. And then I met my my current best friend, which is MB Wave. You had him here on, on the... Oh, on that's the your best track. friend? Yeah, he's my best friend. I've known him since we were like... He had like 400 subscribers and I had 300. He was like 16 at the time. I was like 18, 19. Right now, oh, I'm 22. So and he, I'm 22 right now and he's 19, I believe. He just I think he turned 18. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. But I know he, I'm three years older than him, and I've known him for so long. Since 2019, we've been making music together. When I met MB, we made music every day, bro, on Discord, like from 8 a.m. to like 3, 3 a.m. It was it was crazy. Like our work ethic was insane. We, we made so many beats in like summer, and we just became like best buddies. And after like a year of making music together, like, he met Donnie, like his channel blew up, like MB's channel was going crazy with the numbers. And my channel was like the always like a small channel, but um, MB was starting to like, gain hella traction. And then he met Donnie and he met all these other producers. And they used to play like the forest and like games like that together on Discord. And MB was like, yo, you want to come play the forest with us? And I was like, bet. And that's where I met Donnie, uh, the OG like um, creator of Katana. Uh, yeah. the CEO. And, and Katana's like started, a collective of producers, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a collective okay. of producers. It's at, at the moment it's just um I think it's eight, nine of us. MB just joined recently a couple like days ago. It's mm -hmm. Donnie, it's Kevin, it's Jero, it's Varela Katana. And if I forget somebody, bro, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like a lot of people in there or like because i know mb just joined like 
like it's just eight but my memory is terrible i have really bad memory it's also a prod by ty he's like the sample maker in the group he's crazy bro he's insane and stafford and the rest of the gang i am so sorry if i love someone else but my mind is <laughs> yeah so i met donnie on a discord call and we just started like playing every day he started like facetiming me and and like calling me on discord and i was like whoa this i admired him like for real when i started producing i always found his beats and it was like shit donnie katana like sixty thousand subs to me he was like famous he was like mm the top of the top he was like metro booming level in, in my eyes he was like the goat so when i started when he started calling me and like i was like this dude really wants to be my friend i was like freaking out i was like holy shit and <laughs> we just we started we just became friends like me donnie mb and then one day he was like you want to join and i was like sure fuck yeah of course and that was one of the best moments of my life like we've been through so much stuff together i've been in katana for like a year or two maybe we had a trip to Atlanta in January. It was crazy. Like, I'm grateful for everything that like, Donnie's presented to me, like every opportunity and B as well. Like, I'm so grateful I met them. Like, everything happens for a reason. And I feel like mm -hmm. I'm truly blessed to have, like, them in my circle, them in my life, you know? Even if it sounds like yeah. I'm not, a lot of, not a lot of people are like, man, I love these guys or I'm so blessed to have them. You know, people like to be tough and shit, but I, like, truly, like, generally love these people, man. They're like family, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I didn't know y'all met like that, bro, because I've always, like, I, I originally discovered um MB Wave's channel because, like, back then I used to, like, write a whole bunch of shit when I was in high school. I used to write a whole bunch of, like, lyrics to random beats. And I just stumbled across MB's uh, channel. And I, I, I was like, damn, his, his beats are crazy, bro. And then, like, I started to slowly discover other producers under MB. I discovered you. I discovered... Like the whole katana movement like i appreciate the work that producers put in because i feel like it's not really talked about enough especially with them getting the credit that they deserve because like a lot of these artists up and coming artists like they'll fuck with a producer but when they make it to a certain status or like get some kind of clout or fame they just forget about like where they started you know what i'm saying so i always want to make sure i give yeah. like the people that just do like you, MB Wave, Cujo, everybody, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, all right. So, actually, how I really met MB, like it wasn't just on YouTube. I remember now, like, perfectly. Like, I met him on YouTube, right? And we, we were like in the same little collective. I forgot the name of the collective, but there was a lot of people that are really big right now, like, um, Rio Leva from Internet Money, um, right, Spaceman oh. from Internet Money, too. Like, we were all like besties in that little group chat. And like everybody's doing their own thing right now. But with MB, he actually pranked me. I remember now, like we were in the same group <laughs> chat. And then I got a DM from this guy called this random rapper. And he was like, yo, I want to buy an exclusive beat for like 10 bucks. And then I was like, I can't do an exclusive for $10. And then he was like, well, fuck you. And you're really not that big of a producer and shit. Like he started insulting me. And then after like a while of me fighting with this guy, he was like, haha, yo, this is MB. This is actually a prank, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I was like, God damn. And after that, we just started, he invited me to a Discord call and then we just started making beats. But that's how I first met him. I remember now. That was the little prank that like started the friendship. Mm, that's funny. That's funny as hell, bro. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if you heard my, my question about like the first beat that you made. Like, do you remember the very first beat that you made? Yeah, it was awful, bro. I remember me watching so many tutorials, like BusyWorks Beats, KBZ, um, a lot of internet money tutorials. But I never made a beat. I was like, one thing about my mentality back then was like, I really want to perfect it before I do it. Just like when I started skating, I would watch skate videos for like a week straight. And my mindset was like, if I watch it enough, I'm not going to, I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to master it like before I even try it. So I watched a lot of tutorials before I made my first beat. And after that, I watched this, my tutorial. He's, um, he's a goaded producer, by the way. And I made a, like a flute Travis Scott type beat, but it was like so bad, bro. It was terrible. But after <laughs> a while, like I, I didn't upload it to YouTube because 
I always knew that it was bad. Like I knew my beats were bad, so I never uploaded them. But when I made a beat that was like, wow, that's when I uploaded my first beat. Mm-hmm. And it, I got a sale like two days after I uploaded it. And that was just like that. That's what started my beat making addiction. Mm. What are some of like your biggest pet peeves when it comes to like making beats or like making beats in general or like making beats for specific artists? Like what are your biggest oh. pet peeves? One of my biggest pet peeves has to be. Wait, what's the definition of pet peeves? Because. Um, I would say like pet peeves as in something that really like. I think I, I think I said in the interview earlier, like I grew up in the States, but I've been living in Mexico for like 12 years. Oh, 12 years? When, when yeah, I've been living time? in Mexico for a while, like. I know basic English, but it's not. I know I don't know like every English word. Like, sorry about that. Oh, I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't even really tell. You speak really good English, so I, I would have never known, honestly. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So pet peeves are just like um, things that kind of like turn you off or like piss like you it's... off. Or just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of stuff. Stuff that kind of like irritates you yeah. about like certain things. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. It's really hard to like get me irritated as a producer. Like when I make beats, I like to explore shit. But what I fucking hate the most is when people want me to make something like in the style of someone else. Like I've had so many people be like, yo, can you remake this beat? And I'm like, why do you want me to remake a beat, bro? I hate it when people are like, yo, make a. They send me to a YouTube beat. And they're like, remake this beat, bro. Like, I hopped on it, but the guy doesn't want me, want me to sell it for like 10 bucks. And I'll give you fucking 20 bucks for the exclusive you remake. I hate people that ask me to remake other people's <laughs> shit. It's so annoying, bro. Like, just pay the fucking producer. Exactly. Exactly. Like, um, let me let me talk a little bit about the other shit. So you said you wanted to be a wrestler. What, what got you into, like, yeah. that whole thing? Like, what inspired you? Did you watch a lot of WWE growing up? all the fucking time it was my the my most favorite thing in the world was the fucking wwe bro like i don't even know how i stumbled upon it i was just like switching channels and i saw like two big ass dudes fighting and i was like yo i want to do that for a living and i just started watching like every monday i saw ucw i saw first smackdown i used to buy like do you WWE watch, do you watch AEW? i started watching AEW uh, not too long ago okay. um how do you like that actually since it started WWE? I find it like I think it's better to be honest. Not gonna lie. Yeah. There's something about like the the elite or the the Bullet Club that shit. It's just it's just yeah. It reminds me of the WWE like from the 80s and 90s. And I wasn't even born in the 80s or 90s, but I feel like it's it has better writing. It has better characters. Cause I know fucking wrestling is fake. So yeah. Um, everything is like better than the WWE right now. Like WWE's current state is kind of like. Eh. But yeah, mm-hmm. I remember there was a lot of like wrestling events. Here in Mexico, bro, like wrestling is hella different though. They they sold me the idea that it was like fake and it doesn't even hurt and shit like that. And the first day I went to go train, because it was some fucking like anime type shit, to be honest, bro. Cause bro. there was this old guy that I that he was he used to be a wrestler and he fought with like legends here in Mexico and he lives here in my city. And one day I was just like on fucking it was like Facebook, and I was looking at like wrestlers from here from my city, and I found one, and I was like, "Yo, do you know where I can train to be a pro wrestler?" And he was like, "Come to this address at 6 p.m. tomorrow and bring boots," and that was like the most <laughs> sketchy shit ever. Like, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure why I fucking went, bro. Like, I could have gotten kidnapped or something, you know? But I, I went. Yeah. And this old yeah. guy opened the fucking his garage door because it was like in a, it was like in his backyard. And this old guy just said, who are you? What do you want? And I was like, um, do you know where I can train pro wrestling? And he was like, who sent you? And I was like, this guy, his name, I think his wrestling name is Voldemort or some shit like that. And it was like, he sent me here. And like, he he told me that I could train here. And he was like, okay. And then he had me like scrub the whole wrestling ring. I swear to God, bro, this is not like, it was like some what? karate kid type shit. He was like, all right, you're going to scrub the wrestling fucking mat. And you're going to like tie the the little, what is it called? The ropes? Yeah. And he, he had me, like, make the wrestling ring, like, every day. Every day I went, I had to, like, 
he was trying to show me like discipline and shit. And he had me yeah. like clean and scrub and then like put the the ropes. And then he would train me. And it was like so hard, bro. Like, cause he was a tough trainer, but he was he was a goat for real. Like before I had to like leave, if I wanted to like go home, cause it was like two hours of training. And if I got tired, he was like, all right, just put like your face in a position, like, you know, like strong. And he would give me like the fucking hardest punch ever, bro. Like, cause he was like, you never know what wrestler is gonna be a bitch and try to punch you. So you gotta learn how to take punches. I would, I would come back home with like my fucking face all like purple and them chops they give on your chest, bro. Like that shit is. Awful. Yeah, yeah. I'll be seeing that dude. Uh, what's his name? I'll be seeing Gunther. You know Gunther or Walter? Uh, he's like a newer wrestler. Um, nah, I haven't seen WWE any WWE in like now. months. Oh, uh, WWE. Yeah. No, nah, I haven't seen the WWE to be honest. It's this big, tall. I think he's from like some European country. He's supposed to be like uh, almost like the next. Um, my bad. He's he's like the next uh, Rusev or some shit. But he like he has like oh, a move where he like slaps you like on the chest. It's supposed to be like the hardest shit in the world or some shit. It is. He came from it NXT. He got hurts. caught up. Yeah. I, I haven't seen NXT in a minute. But yeah, bro, that shit that shit hurt. I got knocked out twice. The first time I got knocked out wrestling was when. Our, our our coach was like teaching us how to like fall from the third rope without getting hurt too much and we were doing like the jeff hardy thing right and i hit my head so hard bro like i opened my eyes for a second and then everything turned like white and black and i passed out for like two minutes and after that you know how they start like the choreography like where you grab a wrestler and they pull them to the ropes and they start running and then you like toss them and stuff like that yeah so we were like learning like choreographies and shit and I was running, and I was supposed to, like, go under the wrestler. He was supposed to jump, and I was going, like, full speed, bro. He was supposed to jump over me, and I was supposed to, like, duck. And then my coach yelled, duck. And when I ducked, like, his ass ducked as well instead of jumping. He got confused. And I went, like, head head against head against that guy, bro. Oh, and boom, shit. all black. That was the second time. And after like a year, I was like, fuck this. I'm not going to go back. It's way too much fun. <laughs> was there like a... Damn, was there ever like um like a, like a language barrier that they had? Like, uh, I think... Was it like Lucha Libre did you, that you guys wrestled? Or was it just regular wrestling? Yeah, it was It was Lucha Libre. Okay. It's way... It's different from the American way. Like, the American wrestling is... is like, I think every country has a different way of wrestling. Japan... Mexico, the States, all different move sets and different, like, it, you know, you know how in like Europe, uh, Europe, like the cars go on a different side of the road. Mm -hmm. Well, in wrestling, like in the, in the United States, like when you lock up, like you lock with like your left arm, but here in Mexico, it's like with your right arm and everything they do to the left, we have to do to the right. So it's like, it's weirdly different, but. Mm. You get it after a while. Mm. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fucking. I was gonna. Ask, I was gonna ask. Uh, who are like? Who are like? Uh, your top five wrestlers, like in general, like, like all time, bro. Like right currently, I'm not even sure if these guys wrestled, but like all time, ever since I was like a little kid, CM Punk, Jeff Hardy. Ah, this is gonna be tough. Definitely, definitely. Um, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. I fucking love Shawn Michaels. Okay, I like your Ray Mysterio because so he inspired me hella. Because, because I used to be so small, bro. And Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, definitely, hundred percent. Okay, okay, I like it. That's a good little list. Okay, okay. Now, now Thanks, I can man. tell you what really watch you? wrestling. Okay. Um, <laughs> me personally. Me personally, I say Kevin Owens. I fuck with Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens is great. Him. Yeah, um, I feel like just for a guy his size to be like moving the way he does, and to have like that tenacity on the mic to just like make any storyline like appealing, um, I think he's just he's just goaded. And I think honestly, I wish he was in AEW, but you know. he's in WWE um, still. Yeah, he signed like a three year deal. Actually, a couple Damn. couple months ago, yeah. 
I think he's like 39 or 40 now. So I don't know. Get the bag though. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kevin Owens, Shawn Michaels, uh, AJ Styles. Um, AJ Styles, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, CM Punk. And hmm, I'd probably say Stone Cold. I was more of like a Stone Cold Stone guy. More than like a rock guy. Yeah. I like the rock though, but I was more of like a Stone Cold cold kind of guy. Yes. I prefer uh I prefer Stone Cold over the rock. Were you a DX guy yeah. growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Fuck man. D Generation X. I based Even my the evolution. personality on them, bro, growing up. <laughs> yeah. Even the evolution, bro. Like yeah. Triple H, Batista, Ric Flair, all the Randy Orton. Yeah. yeah, oh man, that storyline was fucking nuts. I can't believe I like I have bad memory, but I remember all the little storylines, bro. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. When was like the last time you watched wrestling? Oh, uh, probably like early AEW. I think Chris Jericho was fighting like Kenny Omega, maybe, or was that in fucking New Japan Pro Wrestling? I'm not sure, but mm. there was some beef right there. There's this guy that like has his hands in his pockets all the time. I remember seeing him on AEW too. Oh, what's um Orange Cassidy, I think? Yeah, I think so. He like always has his hands in his pocket and like he doesn't give a fuck. He always has like glasses on. Yeah, yeah. That dude is dope. People give him people give him shit a lot about that gimmick. They're like, oh, this shit's lame. <laughs> but I think it's pretty unique, bro. It is unique. That's what that's the most important part. Like, not just in wrestling, but even having a little uniqueness takes you a long fucking way. Just like him, like, yeah. he's, like he's he's a pro wrestler, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fucking um. Okay, so you talked about how Katana got started. So like, when it comes to like how y'all like produce and whatnot, is it like? Because I know you said someone does samples for Katana, so it's like, does everyone have like their yes. own role in Katana? Yes and no. Like we all just like right now we're we're taking it to the next level right now, to be honest. It's really gonna go crazy. But as of the moment, like let's say we're all like only producers and the guy I was I was mentioning, Ty, the sample maker, he also makes beats and his beats are fire too, not just his samples. Like right now it's eight of us, but each of us has like our own little style, you know. So let's say Nardo Wick needs a beat. They'll be like, oh, they need it in this style. I'm like, yo, you send them, like, you send them beats and you send them beats and you send them beats because, like, our styles are so different. Like, let's say Kid Cudi hits us up and he needs beats in certain styles. Like, we already know, like, I make shit a certain style and Donnie makes shit a certain style and Jero and MB. Like, we have, like, a little, like, sprinkle of everything, you know? If an artist mm -hmm. needs a pack, like, we send them a big folder with, like, all of our beats. And they don't sound the same, you know? Like, they all sound different. And they're all, like, different vibes. It all has our own uniqueness to them. So okay. we're just producers at the moment. And, like, we might expand. We might, like, find an artist that we fuck with and be like, yo, join us, bro. Like, Yeah, I was just about to ask you, when are you guys going to start, like, signing artists and shit? Because, hey, I, I'm a free agent, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I, <laughs> you know? Man, I, <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to, like, solidify everything right now and, like, make sure... It, we're doing the right business with like the right people and having like, cause it's not, cause in the music business, bro, shit is like way deeper than people think, to be honest. There's so much mm -hmm. shit going on and we just got to find like the right people to like back us up. Cause um, I personally have gotten screwed over like so many times and we're just trying to find like the right people to grow with um, that know us, that know what we want to do and that respect our ideas and respect our creativity. Cause we're not just trying to do like beats and stuff, you know. We're trying to like do more than that. We're not trying to be just like a mm. producer group. We're trying to do different stuff, go different routes. So yeah, when right you, now we're okay. just trying. To so when you say different routes, do you mean like, like the internet money route, or like a completely totally different route? Uh, the internet money. I think internet money is like only music. You know, it's like a record label and a, a collective, but. I think they're like solely focused on music and stuff, but we're trying to branch out on different shit, you know, like let's say clothing, fucking. We also okay. we also really want to get into like, like working with artists and having them like come like maybe make a studio, 
we're trying to make like video ideas like i don't know fucking movies shit like that we're trying to do a lot of stuff not just like music we're trying to be more like creative you know mm-hmm. i fuck with it like, i fuck with it i definitely see that shit because Y'all, y'all got a, a a good roster of producers over there, man. I fuck with all y'all like individually. Like y'all all bring your own individual uh creativity to it. You know what I'm saying? I, I've always heard of Katana, like I've always heard of like the Katana name, but I've never really known like what exactly, like what it is exactly. So I think I have a better understanding of that shit, bro. Cause uh yeah, y'all yeah, are really we're a group good. of friends and- just trying to expand. hmm We're really early into this, like We've been like a group for a minute, but it was just like some fun shit. Like we're we're like a family and we're making music together and traveling. But now it's like we're trying to take it to the next level, you know, trying to do different stuff and trying to get people behind us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what kind of yeah. um, what kind of uh, placements have you gotten so far or if any? I have gotten a couple placements. When I started, I got a placement with a guy called Ray Dub. He's in, from like Florida. I got placements with Mike G. He's better known as Mike G from Odd Future. He's like he was like in he's in Odd Future. He's one of Tyler the Creator's friends. I produced for Mike G with MB actually. I produced with for Caskey, this white rapper. Sounded kind of racist, but like no racist. He, he is a white <laughs> rapper. He's called Khaki I too. Produced. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's called K- K- Kasky, is it, I think. Is it, I pre- oh, Kasky. Oh, yeah, okay, Kasky. okay, okay, okay. I thought you I said Kasky, for, like Kasky G's. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I've produced okay. for Joey Badass and Snot. And okay. I, may, I may be forgetting someone, maybe, but those are like the ones I remember off the top of my head. I feel like Snot is like an artist yeah. that a lot of y'all have worked with a lot. I know Kujo said he worked with Snot, too. I don't know about MB Wave though, but he did. MB he has, bro. Like nothing released yet, but he has a bunch of shit in the vault. But it's not. I can say it because mm-hmm. Snot has posted it on Twitter. Like it's not some secret shit. Um, but yeah, um, Snot fucks heavy with like the whole group. I mean, that's what he's. That's what I've been hearing a lot, and he's been working with Donnie for like years now since, and Kevin Katana as well, like. Before Snot blew up, when Snot was like in the SoundCloud, like still way like growing, that's when Donnie and Kevin were like working heavy, heavy with him, and they still work with him mm. to this day. Shout out to Snot, bro. Snot, Snot respects the fuck out of his producers. Like he's been working with like Katana and with Ian Triplin like for the longest time. Like it's crazy. Most artists blow up and just like start working with like the big ass name producers, but they still like he's trying to grow with us, and that's something you like never see an artist that really wants to help his producers grow. So yeah. that's like a blessing, you know? You do yeah, not I see wish, that. That's super rare. So shit. I wish more artists were like that, bro. Because honestly, like some of these artists that are coming up are just as talented as the guys that are much more known, like Metro Boomin and Boy Wanda and all of them. Like some artists that are lesser known are just as good, if not better. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure, bro. So shout out to Snot, man. Yeah, shout out to Snot. No cap. Shout out to Snot. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to ask. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have a YouTube channel where you upload beats and stuff? I have three channels, actually. Uh, they all like blew up a little bit. That was like the most craziest shit ever. Because I made an R&B channel. Like, most of my beats have like 20K views. I haven't uploaded in like months. It's been deserted, but I made an R&B channel and I was like, I really want to show people that I can make a channel and make it blow up. And it did. It was crazy. Mm. And then I was like, I'm going to make a house beat channel. Mm. And it blew up. So I fucking did it. And I haven't uploaded to those channels in a long time. I started them this year, actually. It was like a little experiment I had because I was like, my views were pretty low on my main channel, and I was like, maybe if I go a different route and try R and B, I might make it. And I've gotten like placements off my R and B channel, which is crazy. It's under another name. It's not even Wick or Mike. I made a completely altered personality because I didn't want people to like associate it with me. Cause mm. I had my own following, like 10k subs on YouTube. I wanted to show people that you could really start and still make it. 
And that's what I did. It was like a little experiment to show that it's not too late. Like people always, I've been seeing it all the time and it pisses me off how it's already too late. Like the market is always, is already oversaturated. <laughs> like, it is not. Yeah. Like, you can still do it, bro. It's never too late. And so I started my R&B channel and it went great. And then I started the house channel and it went great too. And I and on the R&B channel, I had this beat I made with Ty, who just joined Katana not too long ago. It got placed. Um, do you know who Chris Patrick is? Yeah. 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 He, he just like, he uploaded a TikTok with that beat. And I was like, no fucking way. I know that song. <laughs> uh, I know that beat. That's that? mine. And then after like a day, I got an email and I was like, yo, Chris Patrick wants uh, the exclusive rights to this beat on your, your channel. And I was like, I fucking knew that was my beat. And it's a, it's a little snippet. Um, I'll, pro- I'll send it to you after, after the call. I'm not sure. sure what the song is called, but it went crazy on TikTok. That was insane. Mm. But yeah, oh, getting placements is like off of my set. Um, off of my like secret channels is like mind blowing. Like a blessing for real. Yeah. People say so I could. Many... I did it. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many subs does those other channels have? The R and B channel has like 600 subs but the views are fucking nuts compared to the subs like i have 600 subs but my beats are going so stupid well not anymore because i stopped uploading but when i uploaded like shit was crazy and on my house channel i had like 300 subs but my beats were getting like 10k 20k and it was a new channel that's what was like nuts to me because when i started my main channel bro i was getting like 50 views for months and when I made these new channels, I started getting like 2K views like the first week I fucking created them. So it's weird how like the position YouTube is in right now. Like if you make a new channel, you could actually make it. And I've been seeing all these like, because I got into fitness and shit. I've been seeing these fitness channels that started like three months ago have like 50,000 subs. Their first videos have thousands of views. I'm not sure how the YouTube algorithm is working right now. But I feel like they try to compete with TikTok because, you know, with TikTok, if you upload a yeah. video, like it goes out to so many people because TikTok wants you to upload more shit. So they're like, oh, that's your first video. We're going to get you like one million views off your first video, or like 20,000 views just so you stay here on this app. I feel like YouTube try to like fight back by doing the exact same shit. If you make a, a B channel right now, like that shit could actually blow up like super quick. If you make like a fitness channel that could blow up real quick. I've seen even like manga and anime channels like blow up like hundreds of thousands of views and it's like his third video and like it's just insane now like it's we're it's like easier than ever to like blow up on youtube or like to at least get a and gain an audience because it was like super super hard when like i started like from like 2010 to like 2020 maybe or like 2021 it was so hard to like grow an audience on youtube and that was yeah. fairly way, way easier. I'm not saying it's like super easy, but it's compared to how it was back then, like shit. I sound old, but yeah, compared to how it was back then, it's trust me, it's <laughs> way easier, like so much easier to gain an audience. I think the algorithm right now, because like the last three or four videos I've uploaded, um, I've seen like the same amount of views for like the last three um, interviews that I've done. And I'm not really that big of a channel right now, but I know like a lot of um content creators just producers people in general that i felt like were good in- enough interviews to get a lot of views but i was watching this channel called um vid iq i actually have that app um yeah. it actually helps you to like you know build your your platform or whatnot keep track of the analytics and shit and he was talking about how like youtube shorts kind of affects like the smaller content creators I don't know if that's what's happening to me right now. Cause like the last three interviews I've done literally have 14 views, exactly 14 views. So I don't know what I'm doing or if it's You just... know what you should do, bro? Timestamps, timestamps. For some reason, I noticed that the beats I upload with like timestamps, like from one minute, like the intro chorus and stuff. Those are like the ones that YouTube like pushes the most. Cause you can see on the mm-hmm. analytics, like when it's like getting recommended and stuff like that, like when you like, do like the tags right, the title right, and the timestamps. Like YouTube is like, yep, this is it, and just fucking throws it out to the world. Mm-hmm. I feel like timestamps uh-huh. is like a little secret. Not a lot of people are uh-huh. doing it. 
Yeah, I did that for like one. Time. I did that for like one video that I did, but it was like a like a whole podcast. So I don't know. Maybe that's why it didn't get a lot of views. But um, definitely, it definitely, definitely helps. Um, yeah, and staying consistent also helps a lot. That's something that everybody says. I'm pretty sure. But I've been consistent. Like I upload like, like I upload like maybe like three times a week for like the last three weeks. I've been consistent. But that's perfect. Know, maybe it's because I'm a, maybe I'm a, a younger, smaller creator. I don't know. Yeah, but three weeks is, isn't a lot, though. If you stay consistent for, let's say, another three weeks and then another three weeks, in the long run, it's going to, like, eventually all going to come to you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's in store for uh for Mike Wick? What's in store, what's in store for, for me, Mike man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to survive, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't really have a game plan right now. I just... I just fuck with creativity so much. Like I'm in a position in my life where I just like love creating stuff. Like I love reading. Mm -hmm. I love watching shit. Um, I love playing instruments. I play guitar, piano and shit. Like every day I wake up, I'm not trying to have like a schedule. Like this month I'm going to do this and this other month I'm going to do that. Maybe that's bad, but I just let my ADHD do his own little shit. You know, like one day I wake up, I make samples for like other producers. I wake up another day, I make hella beats. I wake up another day and I just write. Cause I love writing. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I used to like make comic books. I wanna like make a, a manga or like a comic book or something one day, like something like that. I'm re I really don't have a single focus. Like I just know my purpose, which is like to create. And I just make beats, upload them. I work with artists that I really enjoy and Hopefully, I could continue to do it, you know? I could continue to, like, show the world my creations, my art, my music. Because that's how I like to express myself. I don't really like to, like, yeah. go online and be like, I feel sad today, ooh, ooh, shit like that. I just, like, if I'm sad, <laughs> you're going to fucking know. But, like, with a, with a beat, like, my beat is going to sound depressing as shit. Like, I express myself through art, you know? So, I just really want to create and get out of Mexico. I really want to go to the States. What what part of Mexico are you in right now? I live in Veracruz, Mexico. It's way in the south, like bordered from like Honduras, I think. If I get oh, that okay. wrong, bro, oh my god! But yeah, it's it's bordering another Latin American country because we have like, you know how there's like this how in, in America like a lot of immigrants go from like on top of a train and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so where I live is like bordered right right where that is. So we have like a bunch of people on top of trains coming all the time. I'm not sure which country it is, but yeah, Dude, I live in way deep South. in Mexico, bro. I, mean, yes. I had a, bro, I had a, I had an ex that was from Zacatecas, bro. Like literally, like the other way, like northern yes. Mexico. I, I think it's way northern Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zacatecas is nice. Yeah, yeah, man. But yeah, I'm trying to. I'm not trying to leave Mexico because I hate it. I love Mexico. Like, this is like. I would live here if I could, but, you know, I really don't know many people that make music that much here. Like, let's say Latin Americans, like Bad Bunny, J Balvin, sure. all those dudes are from, like, Puerto Rico. But if you think of a Mexican artist, it's like a pop artist, like Ricky Martin. Fuck Ricky Martin, by the way. Like, Jesus, I just saw what he did on Twitter. Oh, my God. What do you do? He he was doing some crazy shit, bro. He was um dating his 21-year-old nephew. What? Yup. I, I said the same thing. I was like, what? And he's getting sued by him because yeah. he was supposedly like dating him when he was underage. Like he was he's 50 years old dating like a 20, his 21 year old nephew. Like that shit is crazy. Oh, Ricky Martin's gay, right? Yeah, he is. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I was like, who's the guy? I was like, oh shit, yeah, he's probably gay. That's crazy. Yeah, like yeah. when you think of I heard like some shit about, I heard shit. some shit about Elon Musk, bro. You heard that shit? Yeah, he, like his dad is dating like his ex, <laughs> some shit like that. His, like, yeah, his dad is fucking dating his like stepdaughter. I was like, bro, <laughs> yeah, that's God. that's some that's some rich shit right there. Some rich yeah. shit. I don't yeah. know. I don't Fuck know no, bro. Yeah. Yeah, Fuck man. Me, bro. Appreciate you coming on, bro. Um, let the let the people know where to find you. All that, you know what I'm saying. 
And you can find me on Instagram, Mike Gamas, M-I-K-E-G-A-M-S. You can find me on Twitter. I don't recommend it because I'm weird as hell on Twitter. But it's made by Wick, if you guys are interested. On YouTube, Wick. Simple, simple, simple. You can find me in Veracruz, Mexico, if you're ever down here. You can find me in your nearest bar. Anywhere you... I'm everywhere, man. I'm trying to be everywhere. Okay, okay, for sure. Again, appreciate appreciate you coming on, bro. Connection has been kind of, you know, what I'm saying, but you know, I'm saying, I'll yeah. fix it. You know, what I'm saying, I'll, I'll edit it. But again, it was probably I appreciate you coming on, bro. <laughs> yeah, it it probably was. I thought it was me at first, but you know. Was, yeah, I'm stealing the neighbor's probably, Wi-Fi, so that was probably it. Yeah, but again, appreciate you coming on, bro. Um, shout, shout out to the whole Katana crew. You know, what I'm saying, just went gold shit. by the way. You just went gold? Nah, Donnie just went gold. Oh, Donnie, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that. Shout out. Shout out to Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> thank hey, you, man. Thanks. I appreciate you having me here, bro. Like, really, really appreciate it. Thank you for thank you for seeing Absolutely. something in me, like, wanting to meet. Like, thank you for seeing something in me for for you to, like, invite me over here. Like, you saw something, like, I want to have that dude over here. So, whatever you saw in me, Absolutely. like, thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And I, and I just want to bring, a, like, a, a spotlight to the up-and-coming producers, creators, actors, whatever it is, because I feel like if people that are big aren't going to do it, I mean, I might as well do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm an artist, but I could also give people that spotlight, you know, while I'm doing my own shit. You feel me? 